Hi, everybody. As I said, uh, my name is Grazzelli Francesca and I'm an associate scientist for the Alliance. Today, I'm super happy to present you the Agrobiodiversity Index. We just came back from uh, Stockholm where we received the um, Food Planet Prize exactly for that. So I'm going to brag a little bit about that because of my private life that's not so happy, so I'm joking. So uh, I know that here you are very well familiar with the concept of agrobiodiversity, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. However, we are recognizing that agrobiodiversity agro is becoming more and more popular in research, in development and so on, but still it's something that is still overlooked. And this is because it's quite a complex issue. You know? It really depends on where you start looking at. It can be like on ecosystem level, species, but even soil, pollinator. We have plants, we have animals. So it's really a matrix of complexities that interact with each other. And uh, there are mainly two points that are overlooked uh, that we are interested in. We know that there is an agrobiodiversity loss and we know that this is bad because agrobiodiversity is generally positively correlated with uh, a sustainable food system. However, there is an issue. Even if we know that we are losing agrobiodiversity on different level, at different rate, we don't really know how much because we are not still able to really measure and monitoring uh, agrobiodiversity. So how can we really say how much we are losing, at what speed, at what rate, and how to stop it if we do not have a specific set of data and information? And the second point is, rela is related um, at the potential, no? the importance of agrobiodiversity in terms of improving livelihood, food system, and so on. For example, like, there are plants that could have some traits, like uh, as was mentioned before, that could be extremely relevant for the future scenarios we are witnessing already in terms of climate change. So this kind of tracking down and monitoring would be extremely important. And this is when, where the agrobiodiversity comes in. So the agrobiodiversity index basically is a tool that would support, that supports and try to monitor the level of agrobiodiversity, but also provide uh, information, useful information for policies, actions, uh, not only at the political and public level, like we are also interacting a lot and having a lot of partnership with the private. And I can provide more information on that later on. So there are three main pillars uh, under the agrobiodiversity index. One is related uh, on market and consumption, so the idea that higher level of agrobiodiversity can contribute to healthy diets. The second is related to production, because of course it's important to consider like, the fact that we still need to produce, but we need to do it in a sustainable way. The third one is more related to conservation, so genetic resource management in an optic to have some kind of safety net in the future. Of course, all of these are uh, related to the SDGs and many of the key goals that we want to achieve in terms of uh, development. So very briefly, the architecture of um, the Agrobiodiversity Index. I mentioned that we have these three main pillars. And across these three main pillars, we have a minimum of 22 indicators that are spread and interlock across three uh, different um, uh, computational categories, measurement categories. So it's status, action, and commitment. I, I'm going to provide uh, in the next slide uh, some, some examples of these indicators so it's easier. But you can already see that what we are trying to do with this, with this tool is to provide a framework, a picture of what is there, uh, a picture of what is, being, uh, what is happening in terms of conservation or deterioration of agrobiodiversity, and then commitment. What are the public or private commitments related to agrobiodiversity? So these are all, these create like a possibility to create a different and multiple outputs to different stakeholders from the research, scientists, civil society, and also public and private. Some very um, quick examples uh, of indicators. So for status, we have varietal diversity, species diversity, neglected and underutilized species. And I was mentioning before, now we're not only talking about plants and animals, but we have also pollinators, soil, higher level landscape. In terms of action, we have more management practices, diversity based practices. The uh, commitment is um, is the one that is a little bit different also in terms of calculation and so on. So it's commitment supporting agrobiodiversity. Generally, where we, how we collect the data, uh, data comes from uh, a very different uh, uh, data set, 
can be like the Faustat, the spam, the daddies. Uh, it really depends. Uh, some are like trends, so we need data that uh, varies across. We have like length of time. Others are more specific to regional, national, or landscape level. Of course, it, the kind of data that you will need, it depends on the objective of your studies and uh, like the, the span of your research. So it, it's, it's quite flexible. On another side, for the um, commitment, I'm just gonna go quite quick on that and I'm gonna come in back. For the commitment, uh, generally what we do is uh, text mining. So this is an example of um, a publication that we have recently done, text mining national commitments toward agrobiodiversity uh, conservation and use. We analyzed nine countries. Actually, at the beginning was 10, China was included, but exactly because uh, we are using this system of uh, um, optical recognition tool. The fact that documents uh, were not written using the same uh, characters uh, provided some issues. So we focus on nine countries, but still you can see that almost 6,000 documents have been uh, retrieved and analyzed in order to understand uh, what kind of politics, uh, what was the level of engagement, and uh, what was the focus and the aim of those politics. Uh, and this can provide useful guidelines to understand uh, where are the gaps, where are the strengths, and what are the trends that we're doing, that the, the politicians are, are focusing on. Um, these are just some of the publication uh, that, uh, in terms of relating to the, to the action analysis. Uh, so once again, uh, this is actually more focused on the farm level. So what the communities are doing, uh, what the private sector is doing, and uh, which are the practices that together interacting to each other can provide different outcomes. So yeah, sorry, I didn't specify one important point. It's, it was not just an assessment of agrobiodiversity, but how the different level and uh, variables of biodiversity interact to each other. So in terms of soil, landscape, pollinator, the one that I mentioned before. So there is also this dynamic uh, component. My colleague is uh, from the UK, so that's the sense of humor that you will receive today. <laughs> so, but the idea is actually that uh, even if it's um, really like ground basis on uh, on data, and uh, I will show you the how was the, the development of this tool, how, how what we went through. It's really important to 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 see how the focus is actually to, to have a, an impact in terms of agrobiodiversity and it's actually quite a flexible tools because I mentioned these 22 indicators that we are using but it really depends on the necessity and the request that we receive. The timeline is just uh, we start in 2017, 2018 with the first uh, with the first prototype. Of course, we went through a lot of uh, tool testing to understand, for example, the sensitivity, adding diver adding div um, diverse weights to the indicators, how the index would change, etc. Some tool application. Uh, finally, between 2021 and 2022, it's where we finally had our methodology published on peer-reviewed journal. So we were able now to, to actually expand our actions and uh, we have a different country profile for the Mediterranean diets and so on. And uh, these are some further information if you want. Of course, I'm here available to answer all of your questions, but uh, there are also the, my email and my colleague email at the end of the presentation. So any kind of additional, more specific uh, technical requests can be addressed there as well. I will be happy to do that. And uh, I don't know if I've been in the 10 minutes, but more or less, that was it. And uh, these are just the components of the team. And this is the, the Food Planet Prize I was bragging about before. Thank you very much.